from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 5th, 2020. Israel's Minister of Defense, Naftali Bennett, is in Washington, his first trip to the capital in that capacity. Bennett met today with his U.S. counterpart, Mark Esper, at the Pentagon, where, according to the U.S. Department of Defense, the two focused on reaffirming the longstanding and strong military-to-military -military partnership between the United States and Israel moving forward, and discussed at length the regional threats with an emphasis on Iran's attempts to militarily base itself on Syrian soil and Israel's campaign to prevent the Islamic Republic from cementing its position in the war-torn country. And Iran's supreme leader appeared to call on Palestinians to wage war on Israel and for all Muslims to support it in response to the recently unveiled U.S. peace plan for Israel and the Palestinians. Ynet cites tweets from Ayatollah Ali Khamenei that the answer to this plot, referring to the U.S. plan, was bold resistance by the Palestinian nation and groups in order to force out the Zionist enemy and the U.S. through jihad. And the Times of Israel cites an address posted on the Ayatollah's website which supports continued terror against Israel, which Iran funds, saying, we believe that Palestinian armed organizations will stand and continue resistance, and the Islamic Republic sees supporting Palestinian groups as its duty. Reuters reports that a draft resolution against the U.S. peace plan is being circulated at the United Nations. The resolution reportedly condemns plans to annex West Bank settlements. As we reported to you, White House Senior Advisor Jared Kushner is set to address the U.S. plan in a meeting with the U.N. Security Council tomorrow. And Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas is set to address the council next week. A Palestinian teenager who was throwing a Molotov cocktail at Israeli soldiers today was shot and killed. The 17-year-old hurled the firebomb at soldiers during what the IDF said was a violent riot in Hebron. And three rockets were fired into Israel last night from Gaza. There was no damage or injury reported in response to the projectiles, as well as to a number of incendiary balloons also launched at Israel from Gaza. IDF aircraft hit several Hamas terror targets in Gaza. Later today, more arson devices were reported, including one which was captured on video approaching a kindergarten in Kiryat Gat. Staff quickly got all of the children who were playing outside back inside, and there were no injuries reported. The IDF also said today that it was reducing the size of the Gaza fishing zone by a third in light of the recent continued attacks on Israel. A new survey shows that the vast majority of American Jews consider themselves pro-Israel, though over half not happy with the Israeli government. The poll was conducted for the Ruderman Family Foundation by the Melman Group on a sample of 2,500 American Jews. Eight out of ten identified themselves as pro-Israel, and 67 percent said they were attached or very attached to Israel on an emotional level. Some 57 percent identified as pro-Israel, but also critical of Israeli policy. Foundation director Shira Ruderman shared some insight with JBS. The gap between the public discourse and actual feelings will only be reduced when the conversation about Israel's relationship with the American Jewish community is more inclusive and diverse and not limited to a small closed circles. Producer, writer, director and actor Gene Reynolds has died. Born Eugene Reynolds Blumenthal, Reynolds was a six-time Emmy winner, known for such beloved TV shows as MASH, which he co-created, and Lou Grant. Reynolds was also a former president of the Directors Guild of America and received their Achievement Award. He began his career as a child actor in a 1934 Our Gang short. Reynolds died Monday at the age of 96. Well, Israel named its representative to this year's Eurovision, 19-year-old Eden Alain, who is the first Ethiopian Israeli to have the honor. 
Born and raised in Jerusalem, Elaine is now serving in the IDF. She won the Israeli reality show HaKochav Haba, the next star, last night, which determines Israel's representative at the International Song Contest. Elaine said, it is an insane honor to represent my country. It is amazing that an Ethiopian is doing it for the first time. She said, think about where we were when the Ethiopians first started making Aliyah and look at where we are now. It's a whole new world. The song Elaine will be singing will be revealed next month. The Eurovision will take place in May in the Netherlands. And Israel made Bloomberg's top 10 most innovative countries once again this year, coming in at number six, dropping one place from last year's fifth. The Bloomberg Innovation Index ranks the world's 60 most innovative countries. In first place this year, Germany. The U.S. came in ninth. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, February the 5th. At 7 o'clock, we bring you the memorial ceremony held at the United Nations last week on the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, with remarks from world leaders and a keynote address by Judge Theodore Maron of the UN Commission on Criminal Tribunals. At 9, it's part one of Mark Olive's sit-down with former chairman of the Conference of Presidents, Richard Stone. At 10, we hear from Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen survivor Esther Geisels on Witness. And coming up right after this newscast, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 5th, 2020. I'm Tisha Bader.